Conquering Mars is a very appealing idea, but it might be trickier than it sounds. Let's set aside the technological discussions and talk about the impact Mars travel might have on its first volunteers. The first important issue is the change in gravity. There are three gravity fields you would experience on a Mars mission. The first is being weightless on six months trek between the planets, then on the surface of Mars living and working in approximately one third of Earth's gravity, and finally upon arriving back to Earth readapting to the gravity we take for granted. Transitioning from one gravity field to another affects spatial orientation, hand-eye coordination, balance, movement, and you are likely to experience motion sickness. Without gravity working on the body, bones lose minerals with density dropping over 1% per month. By comparison, the rate of bone loss for elderly men and women on Earth is from 1% to 1.5% per year. And after returning to Earth, it might be impossible to correct this bone loss, which increases the risk of osteoporosis. Since it takes no effort to float in space, lack of exercise and proper diet will lead to heart problems and loss of muscle strength and endurance. If they don't exercise correctly, the fluids in astronauts' bodies will shift upwards to their heads, which could put the pressure on their eyes and cause vision problems. While in space, you are likely to develop kidney stones due to dehydration and increased loss of calcium in your bones. As you can see, being in space can cause a lot of unpleasant things to happen to your body, but I haven't even mentioned radiation yet. The most dangerous aspect of traveling to Mars is space radiation. Earth's magnetic field and atmosphere protect us from harsh cosmic radiation. The International Space Station sits at the edge of this protective magnetic field, and there the astronauts are exposed to 10 times more radiation than on Earth. This is still much less radiation than the crew on a mission to Mars will encounter. Radiation exposure might increase cancer risk. It can also damage the central nervous system, reducing motor functions and causing behavioral changes. It can also cause radiation sickness that can result in nausea, vomiting, weight loss and fatigue. Behavioral and psychological issues are inevitable among groups of people who are isolated and cramped into a small space for a long time no matter how well trained they are. You might become grumpy, distracted and unable to communicate effectively, effectively or even develop depression. You could also develop a sleep disorder because your circadian rhythm might be disturbed by the noisy environment, the stress of prolonged isolation or by the 38 extra minutes in each Mars day. Finally, going without fresh food for a long time wouldn't make anyone happy. All of those things could affect the success of the mission and the long-term well-being of the crew. Another problem with the Mars mission is the communication delay between Mars and Earth, which can be up to 20 minutes each way. Because the crew can't get instant advice, they need to be extremely well trained in areas like mechanical or electrical engineering and medicine. In a worst-case scenario, the crew must be prepared to complete the mission on their own without any help from Earth. NASA puts a lot of money and effort into finding the solutions to all these problems, so by the time the first Mars mission is ready to launch, the risks for the astronauts will be minimized and the success rate should be high. That's all, thanks for staying till the end. Stay tuned as more is coming every week on Quick Science.